Hi guys, my name is Anurag. In this video, I'll be covering the physics chapter on radioactivity. So to start, let's talk about Ernest Rutherford's gold foil experiment. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford performed an experiment which showed that the positive charge in an atom was contained at its centre in what became known as the nucleus. Rutherford bombarded a very thin piece of gold foil with alpha particles, which are actually the nuclei of helium atoms. The alpha particles produced small flashes of light wherever they hit the fluorescent screen. The results of the experiment were that most of the particles went straight through. This proved that the atom is mostly empty space. Some particles were deflected at small angles. This proved the existence of a positive nucleus. And finally, some alpha particles deflected back through angles greater than 90 degrees. This showed the existence of a small, dense nucleus. An energy level is a fixed energy value that an electron can have in an atom. When an atom absorbs energy, it goes into a higher energy state. This is the excited state. Eventually, it falls back to its original energy shell. Here are some definitions you'll need before I talk about radioisotopes. The atomic number of an element is defined by the number of protons. The mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons of that element and isotopes have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons. Radioactivity was discovered by Becquerel in 1896. It is the spontaneous decay of an atom due to an unstable nucleus. It results in alpha, beta or gamma radiation. Alpha radiation is a helium nucleus that's emitted from the nucleus Beta radiation is when a neutron splits to form a proton and an electron. The proton stays in the atom, but the electron gets ejected and is now called the beta particle. Gamma is just EM radiation, not a particle. The activity of a radioactive substance is the number of nuclei of that substance decaying per second. It's measured in Becquerel's. One Becquerel is equal to one radioactive disintegration per second. Now, the law of radioactive decay states that activity is proportional to the number of nuclei undecayed. In the formula, lambda is the decay constant. It has a different value for different isotopes. N is the number of nuclei undecayed. The time taken for the number of undecayed atoms to have is always the same and does not depend on the size of the sample. This time is called the half-life of the isotope. Since rate of decay is directly proportional to the number of atoms undecayed, the number of atoms disintegrating per second also decreases by half in one half-life. Another useful formula is Half-life is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by lambda, which is the radioactive decay constant. Here's a question. A radioactive isotope has a half-life of 5 years. What fraction of the original sample will have decayed in 20 years? So, you notice, after each half-life of 5 years that the sample halves, after four half-lives, the fraction that will have decayed is 15 7 16 and the fraction that will still have to decay will be 1 16 There are many uses of radioisotopes. Archaeologists use carbon-14 dating to determine the age of a sample. In industry, it can detect leaks and wear in components. Mm -hmm.